When the weather gets cold and rainy, some people choose to drop the muddy pitches in dark evenings and instead go indoors to keep playing football. But the thing is that indoor football is a lot different from football played outside on the grass, which also means that you need to get the right shoes in order not only to get the best performance, but also to stay safe from injuries. So in today's video, I'm gonna explain what a good indoor football shoe is, and also of course give you my top five best shoes for indoor football in 2020. But let's start off by looking at why you need indoor shoes. Of course, if you don't wanna know or don't need to know and just want to watch the top five, you can use the chapters in the description right down below or in the YouTube player itself. But if you do wanna know, well, obviously you can't wear your football boots with studs because you play indoors on a flat, often wooden surface, so studs would be a really, really bad idea. But instead of just using your running shoes that you would use casually as well, well, you want something with a relatively grippy outsole that is also marked as non-marking, and that's pretty important. But since you're playing on this flat floor and using a lot of really hard, sharp twists and turns, well, you want a rubber or something similar outsole that's pretty grippy to make sure that you actually get a pretty firm footing despite having a flat outsole. Because I guess we've all seen those videos on the internet of some poor guy getting nutmeg three times and then falling flat on his face because he lost his footing. Don't be that guy, get a, a shoe with good grip. Another thing I would take a look at is to get some proper cushioning because due to the fact that you're running on a flat wooden floor, well, your legs are gonna take a few more shocks and vibrations coming through the shoe compared to what you would get if you ran on a natural grass pitch because the ground simply doesn't absorb as much energy. And so in order to get a good and safe and mostly important, a comfortable ride, you want a little bit of foam to give you some cushioning to make it as comfortable as possible. But of course, without the shoe again, becoming too bulky. So it's a little bit of a fine line, but go for some cushioning and you can thank me later. Now, finally, I personally look for a shoe that has a really soft forefoot, but then also has a good stable midfoot and a nice lockdown in the heel. Because see, the thing is that if you get that really grippy outsole and you step down on the floor, you want to change direction. Well, the, the shoe is going to stay in place because of the grip but your foot is gonna move a little bit inside of the shoe. So if you get a more stable midfoot and a nice locked in heel, well, the shoe is simply gonna feel more responsive and ultimately like a nicer shoe. Now, of course, in terms of the thickness of the upper, I personally like to get a slightly thicker upper to have that elegant padded sensation. And I think most futsal players would be looking for the same and maybe also a slightly higher toe box. But if you're used to playing outdoors football like myself, I would typically advise you to go for a fit that's a little bit more similar and sleeker like you would find in a normal pair of football boots. But let's narrow down my top five favorite boots for indoor use here in 2020. And in number five, we have the Adidas x Coaster Point One IC, which is probably the closest thing you can get to having an actual outdoor FG boot for the indoor courts. See, the thing is that Adidas have more or less taken one-to-one -one the upper from the FG boot and slapped it on a light strike foam outsole, but with the exception of having the slightly more foamy and padded heel from the X Coaster Point 2. But it does really feel a lot like a football boot. It's super light and it has a really close and very sharp sensation on the ball. And in general, it just feels extremely one-to-one -one in how you connect with the ball and the ground. Is it the most stable indoor shoe I've ever worn? No, it's definitely not. But if you just want to take your boots inside and keep on playing with the same sensation, these are probably the closest you'll get. Fourth place goes to the Nike Premier 2 Sala, which in my book at least is one of the best no-nonsense indoor shoes that you can get. 
Because this thing is 80 euros and it gives you a low and pointy suede forefoot that's also relatively soft and comfortable, a nice and stable mesh midfoot and a good overall comfortable fit. You also get a lunar lawn outsole which is nicely cushioned and it just works. Now keep in mind that these are on the tighter side so if you have a wide foot they might feel a little bit snug. With that said, whether you want this or the indoor OG classic, the Adidas Special, you're gonna get a class suede indoor shoe at a very, very fair price. And they just look sick as well. On the other side of the looks boldness scale, we have the Joma Tactical 908, which is definitely a lot louder than the Nike Premier 2 Sala, but this is a shoe that's made with a really thin woven upper and a little bit of film coating on top, meaning that while you do get a relatively tight fit, it's also really comfortable, moves to the shape of your foot very quickly, and will also be pretty suitable even for people with relatively wide feet. But you probably want to go down half a size because the tactical runs a little bit long and you probably want to avoid feeling like you're wearing clown shoes out there for all the technical stuff that you have to do. With that said, the touch in the ball is really nice and because the upper is so thin, it's extremely sharp and in general, the connection feels good. And while you have this shoot area and then the super shoot area, um, they're not gonna make you strike the ball even better, but the contact overall is nice. The star of the show though on this shoe is the outsole, which is really, really flexible and feels very free. And in a game where you're on your toes a lot and change direction sharply all the time, that's a big plus in my book. I would have liked the midfoot to be a little bit more stable, but I can't lie, overall, this is a really good indoor shoe. Now, last year, I named the Mizuno Morelia Indoors here as my favorite indoor shoe of the year. And it's, it's still a fantastic shoe. There's just one that's better, but more on that later. Because here, you get that same lovely, really soft leather forefoot as we know from the Morelia 2 boots, which just delivers a fit that's next level comfortable and really, really accommodating. Then you get a suede toe cap for extra durability, or if you love to, make that toe poke shot that you do in futsal a lot, you get an outsole that's even more free and flexible than in the Joma Tactical, and that's really nice. And you just get a lovely, classy, elegant touch on the ball. The only downside is that it's 129 euros, and for an indoor shoe, that's, ah, it's a bit much. But thankfully, if you don't want to or can pay that, you can go and get the Morelia Classic, which might be a synthetic leather and it has a slightly bigger outsole but you still get that lovely Mizuno trademark fit and it's just 90 euros instead. So get these if you can but if you don't want to you can also buy these that are a great alternative. Even better for toe poking. But before we move on to number one let me just highlight and show some love to the Nike Luna Gato 2s, which is one of the best all-round indoor and street shoe combos I think I've ever worn in my life. If you know, you'll know that this is a classic and it's still going strong. Amazing shoe. We also have the Adidas Copa 20.1 ICs, which is just, it's mega plush and padded and elegant with this thick, suede forefoot and I reckon it looks pretty boss as well. And finally, we have the Diodora Brazil Elites, which is good if you have a wide foot, but if I'm honest, I, I would only choose to wear it if you want to wear something that no one else has, because otherwise it's nowhere near as good as the other shoes on the list. It is what it is. It's, it's kind of ugly. But which shoe could possibly beat the Mizuno Morelius? Well, for me, actually, it was pretty easy. The Nike React Gatos, which I think gives me everything that I really want in an indoor shoe. See, the fly knit up here is so soft and so ridiculously comfortable, but also has a little bit of texture and grip to it, thanks to the silicone covered duds. And the touch in general is just really natural and very, very elegant, perfectly balanced. The fit is, I would say, slightly on the wider side. It accommodates a lot of foot shapes and a little bit more relaxed, but has a good amount of stability in the heel. And while the octopus 
sends pots or whatever they're called in the outsole don't really do that much. They're not in the way and generally the outsole is nicely flexible and offers good stability and grip. And the rear guard is just so good that I wouldn't mind wearing it casually as well. So a big recommendation from my side, especially now that they're on sale, right now, at unisportstore.com so you can buy them right up there in the link. Shameless plug. Go get them. They're awesome. So there you have them, my friends, what I feel are the five best football shoes for indoor football in 2020. And if you want any of the shoes, you can buy them via the link to unisportstore.com right over there, of course. But before you go and do that, tell me what shoes you would wear if you had to play indoor football right now in the comment section right down below. And then, of course, also don't forget to go subscribe to the channel with the notifications on in order to get a little ding notification when our latest videos drop. And also, you can go and learn how to improve as a footballer in the playlist right down there. And with that said, guys, I'll be signing off. Cheerio.